Like several engineering programs in Canada, Queen's University offers a general first year that allows students to take a broad range of multidisciplinary courses, thus allowing them to gauge their interests and guide their discipline selection for the following academic year. For the sake of time and hardship, they can be summed up in a few key sentences that accurately describe their contents. Now, as the saying goes, save the best for last, which is why we're going to start with the worst possible one in existence. Mod 1. This course involves a semester-long group project that provides students with several skills that are essential in the professional workplace. These involve proper document formatting using headings, page numbers, and references, as well as writing concise yet effective sentences. The downside to this course is that you lose all the trust you once had in other people when your team members don't show up to any of the weekly meetings, do their share of the work, and ghost your messages in the Facebook group chat. Now, on the exception that your teammates don't do this, it means that you will lose all self-respect as you are the one on the delivering end. Regardless, each team will inevitably fall apart as the semester progresses, just like your GPA. This class also establishes your initial impression of design projects, which is extremely poor as both the profs and TAs are winging the whole course and don't know themselves what is going on the entire time. Mod 2 is a series of weekly instruction-based labs focused on gathering data, air propagation, and statistical significance. In this course, you perform a variety of tasks that you ultimately don't know the reason for, such as using a pre-written MATLAB code and mixing vaguely labeled chemicals together because it's what the instruction said to do. Additionally, it is common practice among students to input fake data values so your Excel plot markers fit the graph's trend line. By the end of it, I'll let you know as you can confidently put knows how to do one hell of a regression analysis on your resume. 111 and 131 are a continuation of high school physics and chemistry, which serve as a basis for the constituent courses taken during the following term. All in all, they're pretty straightforward, but just make sure that you don't get shafted on the final exam. RIP Psi 22. 143 is an introduction to computer programming where you learn how to copy someone else's code during the weekly labs, ensuring that you change the variable names to not get caught by the TAs grading it, as well as blankly memorizing the confusing lecture slides 30 minutes before the final because, hey, all you need to pass the class is a 50. To this day, I still don't know the difference between a float and an integer. 151 is an introduction to the geosphere whose lectures encompass a variety of topics such as rock composition and formation, groundwater contaminants, glaciers, geophysics, and more. The bi-weekly labs can be a huge pain, but on the flip side, you learn two funny ways to pronounce lava texture. The real takeaway to this course is that tunnels are fucking awesome, and the prof is a god. Finally, we have 171, which further expands upon the concepts your high school math teacher didn't want to teach you, because let's be real, Drawing a sine function is a million times better than parameterizing a circle in MATLAB. You learn how to integrate a function, which in practical use is kind of cool. That is until you realize that once you know how to do it, you have to use it in every fucking class next semester. Kind of like how once you knew how to do multiplication, it was no longer socially acceptable to use your calculator for 2 times 3. But I paid for every button on that Casio 991, so I'll be damned if I don't use them all. Thank you.